Tommy Castor. This is Sports Daily on Wichita's number one sports radio, 97.5 and 1240 KFH. All right, welcome in, everybody. How are you today? Jacob Albright, Paul Savage in for Tommy Castor. We'll tell you where Tommy's at a little bit later in the show. Jad Chambers producing for us. Glad to be here Tuesday following Memorial Day on Sports Daily right here on KFH. You're hearing us. You can call us on the IHOP hotline, 869-1240. You can watch us on our video stream on Facebook, on YouTube, on Twitter, we're all over the place. We're happy to be here. Glad to start another week with you here. Uh, hope you're uh, hope you're not too groggy or anything today. Uh, we know it was a long weekend. A weekend, hopefully, you were able to celebrate and remember why we have Memorial Day. Paul, good morning. How are you? Good. How about you, big boy? I know you had a great holiday weekend, and so did Tommy Castor. By the way, a great holiday weekend. We won't ruin his surprise. Okay. We'll tell you where right. Tommy's right. at and no will ruining. be uh, all week. We'll do that in just a little bit. Um, but we're here on the eve of game seven, on the eve of, on the uh, day after game seven. Uh, it was a letdown a little bit. Game six was one of the craziest endings to a game that we've ever seen. And then game seven, the heat come out and flex and history is not on the side of Boston. And now what is it? Like 153 times. We've seen teams go down 3-0 and 153 times they haven't been able to get it done. Right. And that's it. Yep. You know, that's it, Paul. Like right. it just doesn't, it's not gonna happen. Mm-hmm. And and here we are. Yeah. And you said a little bit of a letdown. No, no. It was a big letdown. Let me tell you how big a letdown it was to me. I had geared up to watch this game. I got to a point where I said, well, you know, I can watch something else and flip back and let's check it out. Check this game. I got to the point where Every once in a while, you get a situation where you say, this isn't worth my time. I'm not enjoying this. This isn't why I've tuned in to watch this, this particular game, no, no matter what the sport is. And that's where I got with this game. I got bored with this game. I mean, it was 20 points at one point. I mean, it was just. Yeah, I mean, they got it within seven or eight, I think, in the third quarter. And I right. thought, okay, here's their run. And it didn't happen. Somebody asked me yesterday, like, who was I taking? And I was like, honestly, in this series, I have no idea. I'll take the points. Right. Like, whatever it is, whatever that ends up being, I'll just take the points. Because if you watch the series, you're like, well, your brain tells you it's going to be Boston, right? The way that Miami right. almost had game six, couldn't get it done. They're Correct. coming back to Boston, all of these things. And I'm going to tell you right now, like, I know Jason Tatum rolled his ankle. That's, that was uh, But Tyler Hero didn't even play in the series. Right. And he's the Celtics' second best player, arguably, at least second best scorer. I mean, sorry, the Heat. So I don't think if Jason Tate, I mean, I watched that game, Paul. Jason Tatum doesn't roll his ankle. You think that's 19 points of a difference? Because I don't. Well, I think they'd have lost it anyway. No, I think it might have been. I, I, I do. When that happened and I saw how, how debilitating it was. And by the way, there was comments throughout the broadcast about how. It's swelling as you can look at it. I mean, you know, when you when you have a, a situation where the ankle is swelling, uh, every time you look at it, it's gotten bigger. You know, that's that's not a good situation, obviously. And and it was huge. No, this is a guy that they they could easily get 30, 35 points from, you know, 15 rebounds, eight to ten sure. assists. This was that guy, and he rolled at and he didn't get stronger. He didn't run it off. He didn't work out the right. the pain. It got worse. He became less and less mobile. I believe that was the difference of the game. First play of the game, a guy rolls his ankle. I don't think we'll ever see another game that is affected as much as we saw that particular injury on that particular player at this particular moment of a playoff situation, particularly in game seven. We'll never see that again. First play. And it changes literally, I think, the wind out of the sail. I know that's a cliche, but I know what you mean. Wind out of the sail with the uh, with the Celtics. And it was just not a fun game to watch. Whereas the night before, that fourth quarter 
of, of game six was must watch TV. If you missed that, you missed something really special. It was incredible. It was incredible. Um, I, you know, I just, the game six was game seven was not, and I don't know. And maybe, maybe Tatum makes up the difference. It, maybe he does, but it's not an excuse. Again, the heat have not had their second leading score all basically all postseason long. Like I don't, I don't need excuses for the Celtics. They didn't get it done. And again, I, I think it's more credit to the heat because you like, that was the perfect, like it had all built up perfectly, Paul, for the Celtics to make the history here, right? Like, you know, everything about the way that series played out and, you know, all of those things was like, all right, well, Boston's going to get this done and we're going to have our history. And the Heat just shut that down. And that's kind of the Heat's thing. It's, it, you can't, I don't know, you can't really put your finger on it, right? Like it's this intangible thing that they have. And now they walk into a series with Denver who, you know, I, Milwaukee was thought of at the time maybe is the best. I think, you know, Denver's looked the best, certainly, through the postseason. So now, again, here you go. The Heat knocked off the one seed in the East. They knock off the two seed in the East. And now they face the one seed in the West. And a one seed in the West that's playing out of its mind uh, and not really letting anybody breathe in this postseason. Right. And the Heat, the storyline of the Heat is a fascinating one. And this finals, if it's competitive, and I think there's a chance that it's not, but I don't think so. I, I think it will be competitive. You have two great storylines here with the heat is this Cinderella and Denver is this juggernaut who could finally get over the edge with this player. Who's been, you know, underappreciated even with two MVPs in the last three years. I think it's a good NBA finals as long as it's competitive. Now it could go sideways, I think, but we've thought that in every series, the heat have played and, and they just don't let that happen. Well, this whole series is going to come down to one person. And by the way, you, you, you say it's hard to put a finger on what the problem was with, with the with the heat. I can tell you exactly what the problem is. If if Butler doesn't get if if Butler doesn't get 30 points plus per game, then there's going to be a problem. And that's and that's what this boils down to. That that blowout game, a couple of those games and in, in the, the three game Celtic run, Jimmy Butler did not play well. Did not play well. When I say well, it would have been well for you and me, but he didn't play well for Jimmy Butler, and he didn't play well enough for what the Heat need to be done by by Jimmy Butler. That's the key. And as far as I can tell, uh, granted, both teams have basically MVP caliber type players that lead both of these teams, and that's what's going to be kind of fun to watch. But uh, that's that that this in my mind, and I could be wrong. But in my mind, Jimmy Butler is the key to this whole series. Yeah, I don't even with Denver, even with Denver, even with Denver. Because and the reason I say that is because he scores 30, 35, 40 points per game. The Heat win the championship. He doesn't. Denver wins the championship. That's kind of I mean, I I don't I know that I see, and I think that's been I think that's been a little bit unfair to Miami. They're gonna get Hero back, I think it sounds like in this series, maybe about halfway through. Don't know. I don't but know. Let's yeah. just Jimmy Butler just in just in the Boston series, right? Right. Just in the Boston series, the Heat won games. Well, number one, Jimmy Butler only scored more than 30 points one time in that series, and they won the series. Um, uh, you know, they, they won a game in which he scored 16 points. They lost a game in which he scored 29 points and they lost it badly. So I, I don't think that it is Jimmy Butler or bust for the heat. And I think that's the mirage that they've created here is, you know, he has been incredible, right? He, he scored 56 in a game against the bucks in that series. The Bucks series is where. He just went nuclear and was out of his mind. But he hasn't scored at that clip really since. Game one against the Celtics, he had 35. That's the last time he scored 30 points. And the only time he scored 30 points in the last two series. He's only done that one time in the last two series, Paul. But we sit here and, you know, we look at it and we're like, oh, it's got to be Jimmy Butler. He's got to be this otherworldly player. But he he really hasn't been as far as just points or shot making since the Milwaukee series he said more than 30 one time in the last two series 
but we all, and I do, I do the same thing, Paul. Like, I think it's like, Oh, Butler's gotta be, Butler's gotta be this otherworldly superstar offensively, but he doesn't, he hasn't been that other than the Milwaukee series. He's been very good. Don't get me wrong. He's been very good. Offensively, yeah, I would say so, yeah. but, but not in every game. Right. And it hasn't been at the clip that it was in the first series of the postseason. So the question becomes, does he need to play like that again, like he did against Milwaukee? Or can it be the way he's played in the last two series in which they've won? Is that going to be enough, especially if they get Hero back by game three, which is the report this morning, that that possibility exists? Now, I think he broke his hand, so a shooter breaks his hand. I don't know what you expect at that point, but... I think Miami's better than that. And that's what's been so strange about Miami. It feels like, and I'm guilty of this too, it feels like Miami is, you know, Jimmy Butler and a bunch of dudes and Eric Spolster is a great coach, right? That's that's sort of what has resonated. But that's not reality. I mean, Butler was really good last night. Offensively, it was maybe his second best game in the series, I thought. But Cam Martin was the star, right? Cam Martin was hitting all the shots. And it's interesting, like that we, you know, we look at this team that way, but reality is telling us right now they're they're far more than Jimmy Butler and a bunch of dudes. Like they have been the ultimate team in this postseason. Denver's a juggernaut. Denver's really talented, really well coached, with a couple of different superstars offensively that can kill you every night. And so it really is like, is Miami's defense which held Boston, you know, to 84 points in a do or die game seven. And, you know, I mean, they, the game one, they gave up a ton of points in game three, they gave up, but they've been, they've been pretty good defensively. Miami has. So that's what it's about to me. Can Miami's defense slow down this nuggets team who has been just incredible offensively? It's more than just Butler. It's about defending Denver as much as it is about Butler getting all these, you know, 40-point games or whatever. Man, you just nailed one of the big keys that I was going to bring up here in just a second, and I appreciate you for that, and that is defense. Because, I mean, how many many balls, how many hands in in the lane, how many ball, how many, how great are the hands of the Miami uh, uh, Heat in this particular series? Because I'm telling you right now, Boy, they've got active hands. They knock more balls away. There are more balls that get loose on the on the floor that, than you see in most NBA games. And you're right. Boy, defense was just amazing. Listen, you hold a team like the Boston Celtics to 84 points. Are you kidding me? Eight, you should have 84 points with still most of the fourth quarter still to go. And, and you hold them to 84, a team that talented, a team in the finals. Of the of the Eastern Conference, I mean, c- come on, this is that's amazing. So I like your take on defense. That's going to be everything, and it's going to be harder to defend the paint than it's been with regards to uh, the way the way the Celtics play in the paint. It's a different style of paint play that you're going to get with Denver. It's going to be more of a it's going to be more of a one you know a classic one man big kind of guy that uh, who's going to try to post up and try to get his points and. I, I think it's going to be a fascinating way to see how Miami says this is how we're going to play uh, the, Den- the Denver Nuggets. I think it's going to be a fascinating series. I'm really looking forward to it, and and it's it's one of those things where if you can if you can survive and you're Miami, and let's say you can get it to a game six, even a game seven. Now I start to like their chances. Even I mean they, they've they've shown me once. I have bought in. If they get this thing to six or seven games, I'm with the Heat. I'm going to switch off of Denver because right now I think Denver wins. But I have my doubts about it, and I'll tell you why in a little bit if you ever want to hear why I think they're, they're, there's a good shot they don't win this thing. But uh, with that being said, I like Denver. I like their personnel. I like their presence in the paint. It's something different that Miami hasn't seen for a little bit. So – I don't know. I, I don't know what to think of I, Miami at this point. I'm not. I, I'll root for. I'll root for Denver because they haven't done it, and I like that franchise, and I like their coach, and I and I love Jokic, and but man, it's hard not to root for Miami, right? And Jimmy Butler. Did you see the video? Uh, Bam Adebayo trying to hand Jimmy Butler the you know the the Eastern Conference Finals trophy, and and Butler waves him off and says, "No, I'll I'll hold the next one." 
Like, I mean, it, it is <laughs> like they are, you know, he is Jordan-esque uh -huh. in that right. just that killer instinct that's always so hard to like define it, right? Like we know Jordan had it. We know Kobe had it. That's the thing that Butler has. Now, I'm not I'm not comparing him to those two players, but but that part of it, like whatever that is, that that intangible killer instinct, like however you want to define it, Butler has that. That's yep. what makes him great. That's He's what makes it. him so great in the postseason. And so it is hard to just like it's hard not to find yourself rooting for Miami. I'll root for Denver because I think they deserve it and I and I hope that they get it and I know that fan base is really good and has never had it before and all of those things. Man, I really it is hard not to pull for for Miami right now. And right. what that you just I mean you just look at the roster and everything else and they are better than they're getting credit for. They've had a ton of injuries this year or time missed we should say. And so they're they're definitely more talented than an 8 seed that they ended up being. But they are an underdog, and they'll be underdogs, Paul, in every game of this series, oh, just like they were against Boston. Right, every single game. Right, and 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 Coach Post was getting all kinds of loving from everybody. You know, one of the great coaches, and he should at this point. And and of course, you know, you're an eight seed, and and so I obviously think to myself, thinking backwards on a deal like that, I think, well, maybe maybe you were such a great coach this year, maybe you would have. Got him to a five seed or a four seed, but I'm just that's me thinking stupid, you know, in a lot of ways. But I mean, I wonder that at times. But no, uh, this has been at least in terms of playoff coaching, this is this is one for the ages. Spokesman's uh, coaching for the playoffs has been out of this world. It's just been tremendous. And of course, I'm with you. I'm with Denver. But then again, you know, I've got I've kind of got. Uh, roots, minor roots in the state of Colorado, as you know. I I have a reason yeah. why I want yeah. want them to win. It's it's close to 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 a home, and uh, uh, so that's why I want Denver to win. But I think Denver is overall a better team. But I've watched the Heat, and I'm not sure I want to say that either. I don't feel comfortable saying that I think Denver's a better team because I'm not a hundred percent sure, Jacob. Well, I mean, I think they're a better team, but I don't think that. I think Miami's shown us that that means right. nothing. I right? know like, that. That's right. You know that what's on paper doesn't mean a thing. Right. So we'll we'll see in this series. I hope that it's as good as the games of the Western Conference Finals were. It, it's interesting, and we'll end it with this, and then we'll take a break, and we'll bring Tommy in, and and you can let you know why he's not here. But you know we we looked at those two series, and to me, outside of Game Six which was obviously incredible. The the Denver Lakers series almost felt better because the games were all so good, even in the short series, because the Boston Heat series, like, rarely did games come down to the wire. Right. I'm with you on that. And when we come back, after we get done with Tommy, would you give me a moment while I, to, to let you know why I think there's a real good chance Denver doesn't win this series? I've got a reason, oh, sure. and it may not be what you think. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll get more into the finals. Okay. we got some time here. Good. We'll do that for sure. Good. When we come back, we got some news for Tommy Caster. We'll bring him in. He can tell you why he's not here and why he chickened out of our cookout this weekend. 869-1240 on the IHOP hotline. More Sports Daily right after this.
All right, Paul, before we get Tommy in here, what is your reason that you think that Miami might win this finals? You, as you, as you know, I mean, Denver has made uh, quick work of most of its impo- opponents in the final. I mean, in the uh, playoffs and they've done a great job and they've had, this is now, I believe the count is eight days. I believe it's eight days of inactivity and in the world of sports. And it doesn't matter what sport it is. It's about, repetition it's about it's about rhythm it's about those things that you do in and out and it becomes a part of what you do without thinking about them you know muscle mass uh, muscle memory all those kind of different things those are that's what's important and i think that eight days off for the denver bronc uh, for the for the denver, denver nuggets i think it's going to be a disaster i think it's going to be hard i think they're going to struggle when they first get back on the court now, the only upside would be is, and that is if this, as a basketball coaching staff, they decide to run a camp, some sort of camp. In other words, you know, when I say camp and when most people think of camp, you think, well, dang, that's kind of hard. That's tough. That's, uh, 
that's a lot of effort, and that's what it's, it's going to take. If they if they did something like that, I think it'll be great. But if they said, hey, take a few days off, you know, lay around, get your legs under you, you know, come back and, and you'll be refreshed and ready to go. But I'm not buying the refreshed, you know, we're ready to go, we're, 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 our legs are back under us. I don't buy that. I don't buy that because mentally that, that that's not the way uh, this works. And so I think I think it's going to be very interesting this first game to see what kind of rust uh, the Denver Nuggets have. And I'm not buying. Yeah, I, I'm not buying. I don't know, Paul, but don't you think that like that just has an impact for one game? And the finals are weird too, in that like you get game one Thursday, and I don't think you get game two until Sunday. Mm. This is. You know, the playoffs move at such a good pace and then it gets excruciating in the finals, right. the time off in between games and all of that stuff. So, you know, that that could be a factor maybe in game one. I agree with that. But it could also, you know, be a factor for both teams after game one because right. you have to wait so long in between games. That's not natural to the NBA season, right? When you have to do it that way. It's, it's just, it's wild. But I hate that we do that with finals too. Like, why can't we, you know, you, you get to the most important series, the most important games of your season, and you play them in a way you don't play any other games all year long. You take longer in between the games than you do at any other time in the season. That's, you know, that's different for these guys. That right. is, it is a little bit different. All right. So, uh, Paul, I don't know if you heard, we had a big cooking contest set up over the weekend. Uh, it was going to be my hot legs of, against Tommy's ribs and, you know, as we built it up, Tommy puts up a pole. It's all dramatic and cold feet. Tommy got scared, Paul. He got scared at the last minute right. and pulled off one of the great swindles of all time to get out of the cookout and avoid the competition. I should have known better. We've got Tommy here. Tommy, what do you have to say for yourself? Well, first off, I think you're, you're completely, you know, creating a narrative that, uh, you know, didn't exist. That's, that's not accurate whatsoever. I mean, I was fully primed, fully prepped, uh, you know, to, to make those ribs and, and, and beat your, your hot legs at the barbecue over the weekend. Unfortunately, I had more pressing matters that I had to attend to. Yeah, and unfortunately, you conveniently, um, conveniently had your wife deliver a baby early. Now, I've <laughs> Paul, I've seen a lot of excuses and a lot of, you know, creative ways to back down from a challenge. Just a new one. And that's, never that's seen it. that, you know, yeah, never that's seen it. very impressive by your wife and very devoted wife to be able to pull that off for you. But uh, for real, congratulations, Tommy. There's another caster in the mix here. Yeah, thanks a lot. Appreciate that. We uh, we had our, our baby about uh, just under a month early on Saturday. Uh, and so everybody's happy. Everybody's a healthy little baby boy named Carson Kent. Uh, and yeah, we're, we're thrilled. We're at, uh, we're at home now. We got to home yesterday and everybody's good. And we're just kind of adjusting to, uh, having a newborn in the house. Well, the baby's sleeping through the night, I hope, right? <laughs> um, not quite yet at oh, this point, but, darn. uh, well, yeah, I think, you know, we're, we're working on that. I, I was talking with a buddy of mine the other day and, uh, he was like, Hey, you know, now that, uh, now that you're home, uh, is he walking yet? And I said, well, yeah, I've actually got him out mowing the yard. You got to start him young yeah, at this point. Right, right. Uh, but, uh, but, but no, really like uh, everything's great. And, uh, we might be a little sleep deprived, but, uh, we're super happy. Everything's great. Tommy, are you shooting Life's for a good. basketball team, uh, a baseball team, uh, a football team when it comes to kids? What, what kind of team are you wanting to put together with the missus? Well, you know what? I think it's going to be more like, I don't know, like an individual sport, like a tennis or a golf or something oh, like that. We're, we, we've got, we, we've got two boys. Uh, so there's, we got four of us in the household now. I think we're, I think we're done. I, I'm, you know, as, as our listeners know, I'm, I'm in my late thirties at this point and late thirties with a newborn. I don't think I want to do any more newborns after uh, this one. So I think we're, I think we're good. I think we're going to stop it too. Pair skating is where you're stopping at. There you go. I like that. A doubles tennis. I mean, there's lots of different well, things. Well, doubles tennis. Uh, Jacob's yeah. right. No, Jacob's correct. Yeah, we. I, I sympathize. I had two girls and then a boy, and uh, the boy is different for sure. So I do sympathize of thinking of two young boys in the house. They got a, a different sort of energy than the girls who can quietly do things and be so sweet. Um, and you know, right. boy, we're not that way. We're dumb. We're we're simple-minded creatures, which I try to explain to my wife all the time. 
I remember when we got, yeah, we've got our son home and he started slamming something on the floor for just for like an hour. And she's like, I, I just don't get it. And I'm like, well, he, it makes a noise. Yeah. We're going to make it. Yep. We've got a, we've got a two year old boy and he's coming home today to meet his baby brother. He has no ah. idea what he's in for at this point. And so that's going to be, that's going to be interesting, but you know, we've always heard and, and I'm, I, you know, I'd, I'd love to know if, I'm sure this is accurate from anybody that, you know, has both girls and boys that, you know, the, the old saying is that, you know, boys are, are difficult when they're young, but easier when they're older and then it's vice versa, you know, for the girls, once you get those, you know, teenage girl hormones and all of that, you know, everything, yeah. everything goes out the window at that point. I'm a check out. I'm just going to like black out at that point. I've already told them show, like you, you've got me now. There's going to be a, a stretch of years when our girls are teenagers where you just like, I'm checking out. I'm not, I, I, I don't know how to handle that. I'm, I have four older brothers. It'll be, uh, it, it'll be fun. Well, we're, we're excited. Joe chimes in on the video stream, Tommy, and says he'll have to think twice about supporting you in the future on the cookout. I don't know how you'll ever come back from that. <laughs> It's one of the great, you know, achievements in modern sports to get away from a competition you have no chance of winning and and I applaud you for that. And and I applaud your wife probably more because that is a team player uh and man, she just she knocked it out of the park to uh preserve your, you know, to preserve your your dignity on this. Well, you know, I I think that it's going to be important to have a rematch at some point. I am, I, I will say though, I will be gracious, you know, in my forfeit and, you know, say that uh, it, for, for this particular competition, uh, I don't have any regrets. I'll let you carry the crown for now, but I'll, I'll come back. We'll do it again sometime. And, and I'll, I'll make sure that my ribs take your hot legs down. Hey, who's judging this thing anyway? Who's because I have an idea about a judge. Somebody that likes to eat. Somebody that likes to eat is a, <laughs> It, who who knows their their way around a barbecue whatever i think that is 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 an important ingredient in being a great judge i know such a guy yeah we we had jad come we'll, we'll have to that's a good idea paul we'll get you in on the judging too jad was ready to go jad was ready to is with an open mind to you know to to take this thing down and give us a true opinion but he you know we didn't we just didn't get that chance i'll and have Tommy's an open gotta, mouth how's that yeah, we, uh, yeah, no, Paul, I, the, nobody's doubting your ability to judge barbecue. Well, thank Paul. you for that, at least. Well, good. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll do that. We'll get this thing going. We'll we'll make it a more official, and, uh, you know, we, we got to raise the stakes so Tommy can't back out again. Absolutely. Um, but we, we will do that. You, hey, Paul, you know, if, you know, we get into a barbecue like that, and perhaps the stakes were just too high. <laughs> oh lord i got it oh i got it yes i got it mm -hmm. i got it all right jad did you do you jad did you get that well he wasn't laughing oh well, i don't believe you uh we <laughs> jad doesn't have a camera on the video stream uh all right well tommy if you can find a 15 minute nap find it i suppose uh oh, you dude. got a couple more months here and no sleep and then and then you'll be good to go yeah, I, I appreciate that. We're going to enjoy the rest of this week and uh, should be back on the show next week. And so, Paul, I appreciate you filling in uh, for me this week, and, and we'll uh, we'll do it again. Just have a great time, my friend. You'll never get these days back. Yeah, Just have it's a awesome. great, great time. It's appreciate the best. That. Congratulations. Tell your wife we said hello. Cheryl Teller says, by the way, on the video stream that she wins the trophy for sure. Um so we appreciate that. <laughs> Cheryl, we appreciate your wife and good luck to you guys. And, uh, and Tommy will be back in here next week. All right. Thanks guys. There goes Tommy new dad again. Yeah. There it is, yeah. man. Isn't it crazy, Paul, how you just like that part of your brain erases itself. <laughs> I I've, I've done that three times and I don't remember a whole lot about that. Like, because if it didn't, right, we, it's like, this beautiful mechanism from God. Like we would never have kids again if we remember that beginning part, right. but we, right. you know, sleep when you can and it's fun and it's a blast and it's over before you know it, as you mentioned, Paul, and we're so excited for Tommy and his wife to bring that new little bundle of joy into the mix. And uh, it's very, very cool. The sports daily family grows by one. And thanks to everybody for having some fun with us on the cookout. We will reschedule that and get it done. Uh, whatever is appropriate. It's a long summer. Let's take a quick break.
869-1240, the IHOP hotline is open. We've been talking NBA Finals. We can certainly jump back into that. Some other things out there and on our minds, though, as we make our way through this Tuesday, the first day of the week for us, as it is a uh, the day after a holiday and Memorial Day. More Sports Daily coming for you right after this. <laughs>
coverage. It's time to get back to the sports talk. All right, let's do this thing. Go! Sports Daily is on KFH. All right, we got Riverfest coming up. Friday, June 2nd, you get the Safe Flight Auto Glass Sundown Parade, 6.30 to 8 downtown. The route will start at 2nd and Main and then go south. Past the old library to English back north. Parade route will offer excellent viewing. Entries inspired by this year's theme, which is Fest Forward and the lure of cash prizes. Grab front row seating to watch entrants strut their creative stuff with floats, bands, flags, performers, all your favorite parade traditions. KC46 flyover will be a, just before 7 o'clock, 6.59. The route will be south to north over Main Street with a target of Maine and English. Brought to you by Power 93.5. Uh, KA, KFH KNSS will be a celebrity judge for the Sundown Parade. So looking forward to that. All kinds of good stuff coming with the Riverfest event. And we will uh, we will be telling you about some of that throughout the week. Paul, you, you caffeinated appropriately this morning. You know, I've got... I've got you got my HTO coffee right here. Yeah, yeah. You see our little sticker here. Right, yeah. right. And, and you guys but, made a trip. What'd you think? Well, first of all, before we get started on this, I I, I do want to say this. You left your HTO bottle here over the weekend because you did a stand up. Was it Saturday or Sunday? I I I didn't even know about uh, it. It was Sorry. Uh, it was uh it was Saturday. Saturday. Well, Saturday. you had a nice stand. Yeah. You had to come into the studio, and uh, that's great. And you left your HTO bottle. Uh, Jad has found it, and we have decided that you're not getting it back. What do you think of that? Uh, I believe that it's good advertising. If a stud like Jad Chambers walks around with an HTO bottle, I mean, that's got to be good for business for HTO, doesn't it? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. It's a great water bottle. It's a uh, Hydro Flask, which we sell there in the store with right. some cool stickering on it, which we also sell in the store there. So, yeah, Jad, oh. Jad needs a water bottle. I'd be more than happy. Jad, I told you I'd make that it happen. It does have a couple of, you know, it has a couple of dents in it, we though, because I've dropped that thing. Well, we yeah. noticed. We noticed. Uh, we figured that it was probably damaged. You're not going to sell anything that's not perfect to the public. No, it I doesn't drink you... any different. No, it doesn't, it doesn't drink, drink any, any different. But, it doesn't leak or anything like that. But I'll tell you what, you see a stud like Jad Chambers carrying that. That's makes... true. Makes me want to buy one. That's what it does. When well, we can't. Like we can't. Af- we can't normally a- afford the endorsements of Jad Chambers. Well, no, so, no, that's yeah, true. I, mean, I if, knew that. Yeah. If Jad wants to carry that thing around, I mean, you talk about a discount for us. Well, that's, there you there go. Ain't no but doubt about that. I've got a little story to tell you. I'm going to give you some. I'm going to give you some free marketing because uh, okay. and within the last week, I've taken two people right out to. Uh, in fact, a couple of times on on a couple on a couple people, uh, twice. Uh, but I've taken. Uh, it, within the last week, again, I took my sister and I took Joe Rocco earlier last week. Uh, and it's very interesting because I'm expecting as I drive up and we we just went through the drive through, which is really convenient. And by the way, you got some really great kids working there. I, they, they are really, really nice. I, I really like them a lot and they treat you really well. But anyway, with that being said, uh, we went through and I'm taking people to get tea. That's what the name is in your organization, H T O, mm-hmm. and uh, but both people have bought iced coffee. Now I find that fascinating, and I don't know what's going on. Why am I Something. taking my the people that are closest to me? Why am I taking them to buy tea, and they're getting iced coffee? I don't know that I understand this. Would you help me out? Yeah, so this has been interesting. This is like this it, it, this crazy thing that's happened in society. I missed it too, Paul. I didn't know this was a thing either. I didn't know how much people loved iced coffee. And it's interesting you brought this up today. We oh, haven't okay. talked about this. Good. You and I haven't. We we just, like this morning, rolled out, I think, six new different kinds of iced coffee. Six new ones. Like Ice coffees that people haven't had yet at HTO. So if you are an oh. iced coffee fan, which again, like we missed it. Like we're old school. I drink right. black hot coffee every morning. If you watch the video stream, you see it. Black coffee. And I do drink ours. I bring ours home and we sell it in bags and it's fantastic and I love it. But iced coffee, like not even close. The horchata, which is, I keep, I tell everybody it tastes like cinnamon toast crunch milk. It's really good. But that that sells more than anything of our coffee drinks. And now we have six other ones coming and they're, they sound amazing, like our our uh, cinnamon honey. Did you tried the cinnamon honey macchiato? Yes, I had I think, that the Paul. last time. Uh, so that one comes iced now, yes. starting today. Starting oh, today, I... that one comes iced now. 
Um, so yeah, it's wild. I mean, it's, it is a crazy, I heard that TikTok had something to do with that. Like I guess, I guess iced coffee got really popular on TikTok. Oh, yeah. Right. I missed that memo too, Paul oh. on iced coffee. That's, that's all the, all the jam. Now people love iced coffee. I'm still a huck. I, I drink hot coffee in the morning and iced tea in the afternoon. Like, never, that's what I drink. I've never had iced coffee in my entire life. Although now, it's good. And now I'm going to try it. It is good. I've got to say, I've at least tried it because, but I like you, I, I, I take my coffee with a little bit of, well, basically just cream, but not even real cream. I take, you know, coffee made or whatever's available in a packet. And that's what, that's how I take a little bit of little powdered, you know. So I, I did, I first got, into and i'm not into iced coffee i'm definitely not an expert on iced coffee i know it tastes good okay but i uh so we whenever we had we were just talking to tommy about having a kid and no sleep and all that whenever i first got to wichita and we for the first like we basically until the last year and a half have either been pregnant or had a newborn like the entire time we'd been here and when we first got here is when I was on the road a lot, right. Chasing the Royals to world series and like all the I road remember. covers that I don't sure. do as much of any more, but I would do that. And we had kids at home. So it's like no sleep. That's when I got iced coffee introduced to me because it was like, I've got to find something and I can't just, I, I didn't want to drink, you know, soda all day. So I would get it out of like the vending machine. And I was like, you know what? This is pretty good. Actually. It's like, it's lightly sweetened or whatever. So yeah, I, I get it. I, it's delicious that, that, you know, the stuff that we sell there at HTO that's iced is amazing. Like, right. It tastes wonderful. Well, my I, bigger I, thing is like I have become such a like so dependent on a hot cup of black coffee in the mornings. Like <laughs> if I don't have that, my entire day is thrown. Mm. It's it's pretty pathetic, actually. Right. Yeah. Like I got to have hot black coffee every day when I wake up, like of all the vices that I have. Of everything that I like to do, like that impacts me more than anything. I have got to have that to start my day or my whole day is thrown. And I don't drink a ton of it. You know, I do people tell you they drink like 10 cups of coffee. No, I drink like four cups of, of black coffee at the time we do the show. You know, when I first wake up in the morning, by the time we're done with the show, I've had about four cups of coffee. But And that's their cups, right? I don't know how many cups that actually is. Like the coffee machine, whatever the coffee machine tells you are cups. About four of those, which isn't unreasonable. I will tell you that I had about 12 cups Saturday during that CBS Sports Radio shift. Oh, I can imagine. Yeah, yeah. The five-hour shift. Right. I uh, My voice goes typically. So oh. whenever I do those, they have, they have switched it now on the Saturdays to five hours instead of four. So for the first, because we've been doing that now for, for two or three years, the first – times right and still on sundays which was on there a couple weeks ago on sunday it was their four hour shifts and usually in those four hour shifts like by the second segment or so it's pretty much clockwork my voice starts to go so i have to have something hot like i have to have and and tony will come up our program director and get everything set up and he always brews a bunch of coffee which is great i always appreciate it because i got to have something hot right or my voice will go out and so now when we get to these five hour ones it happens at the same time, a little over three hours in my voice will go. So then basically for the last hour and a half, I'm just chugging coffee constantly because it's hot. I'm just, I mean, I'm just ripping coffee and I'm like, man, I think I've had about 12 cups of coffee here. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's pretty interesting as well. When, uh, when that, that that's maybe a little much even for me. I thought you were a black coffee guy, Paul. I didn't know you put, I put a little bit of creamer. I don't know why I started. I just did. I think partly because, my mom always had it at her house, and I just—I I don't yeah. know why I did. I went years and years just black, but I put it in. I just enjoyed it a little more. But anyway, it was just an observation uh, and uh, about HTO, and I don't—I didn't mean for us the to iced get, coffee thing. I, we're we're too old, I guess. We didn't we didn't catch the memo that we were switching to iced know. coffee. I didn't know. It's a great it's a great idea. I get it because they're delicious. Yeah. That you can drink them when it's hot outside. Like I I totally get it. My next trip, I, I just. It, my next trip, I'm yeah, gonna do try, it. I'm do get your uh, get I've your cinnamon honey macchiato. And then get your I'll, cinnamon honey macchiato. Just get it iced. Okay. And then, and then what I'll do is I'll give you a report. And I'm not going to sugarcoat it. If, if I'm not a fan, you know, right. I'm, I'm going to tell you I like other things better. I'm not going to take it and try it and then, yeah. you know, and and you know, kind of just tell everybody how great it is if I don't think it. And I know you. Whenever we bring these things up. You want honesty from me. That's what you want. I know that's what you want. You want yeah, me to what, tell you what I think, and that's what I and that's what I always do. I mean, you know, I don't. I'm not just 
I'm not just your typical yes man. We yeah, wouldn't, yes, Jad. we wouldn't want anything otherwise. I think Jad's had some of the iced coffee. I, I forgot to tell yeah. Jad too, and yeah. I should. Oh, no, we, no, we, Jad, we, fantastic. Yeah, I, we unrolled I, Jad six new ones. You'll have to try some wow. of the other ones, Jad, and let me know what you think. Yeah, the horchata has been the most popular thing gotcha, by gotcha. far. Like sells more than any other coffee gotcha. drink. Not even close. All right, gotcha. not even close. All right, good. All right, eight six nine twelve forty. That's the IHOP hotline. We're coming back. We've been talking NBA Finals. I want to talk about DeAndre Hopkins. We haven't had an, a, a minute to talk about that. I don't think just based on the holiday schedule. So let's get into DeAndre Hopkins a little bit because the Chiefs are certainly rumored around Hopkins. We'll do that when we return. More Sports Daily coming hour number two on a Tuesday.
All right, welcome back in, everybody. Sports Daily on KFH. Jacob Albrock, Paul Savage with you. Chad Chambers producing the IHOP hotline is open, 869-1240. And it may uh, may feel inclined to get active here because we have some breaking news, Paul. Uh, Lauren Hibbs is out, essentially. Wichita State, Kevin Salt sending a, an email, a letter to, to fans, to, to everybody, basically saying they're opening the search up for a new head baseball coach, a national search. I don't get the indication from the release. Um, and I'll retweet that so you can go see it if you haven't seen it. I don't get the indication that uh, Lauren Hibbs is a candidate in that nationwide search. Perhaps he is, but the language certainly wouldn't indicate that for me. There's more thanking he and his staff for navigating this season. Um, and, you know, there's no timeline on the search. Uh, we There is a line in here. That says, while Hib, we're certain Hibbs did not return to Wichita with the intent to serve as head coach, we're grateful to his willingness to step forward on short notice, providing invaluable experience and leadership during a time of transition. I, I haven't ever had the indication that I thought this was going to be long term. And and that's not that I don't think it should be. You know, I probably would have gone with Hibbs for at least a year or two. Here's the interesting part of this, Paul, as now another coach will be hired. Basket, men's basketball, women's basketball, and now baseball. There will not be, I can't imagine, as much support on this one as even there was for basketball. Basketball, the fan base was a little more divided, I think. I this, think so. I would imagine, there will be more supporters of Hibs than than in the prior um, head coaching decisions. And this one probably won't be received as well, if I had to guess, by, by Shocker fans. No, 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 you're exactly right. I mean... I mean, Hibbs is a Wellington guy. He spent spent his entire early years here in the state of Kansas. He has deep Kansas roots. I mean, just because he coached in Charlotte, North Carolina, for nearly three decades uh, doesn't mean that he's no less a Kansan. He is a Kansas, and we understand that. And, uh, by the way, Kansas Baseball Hall of Famer, I'll throw that in as well. Uh, the statement that was released uttered some words that you rarely hear in these kind of statements or these kind of press releases. In the second paragraph, the paragraph starts out, though uh, these decisions weigh heavy on our hearts because they result in blah, blah, blah. These decisions weigh heavy on our heart. Have you ever heard that in a, in a statement where somebody is, is uh, I don't know. Yeah, they're brutal. That's they're brutal. brutal. They're brutal decisions to make. I, Lauren Hibbs was the a, named the AAC Coach of the Year. We talked about this a lot Friday because we knew a decision was probably coming very quickly. I, I got the sense that they were going to go a different direction. Um, again, I, it's not that I think that that was the right or the wrong decision. It's just the sense I got. And, you know, that's going to be tough. Fans aren't going to like it. Lauren Hibbs was Coach of the Year. But, Paul, they, they you know, they finished three and eight down the stretch. They They did not finish the year strong. It was a mess inherited, which also makes it complicated, right? Um, you know, things at the end of Wedge's time got messy and complicated, and Hib stepped in, and and the team. I think we could all agree overachieved. It's by what degree that you know has some debate, I suppose. But this is going to be a tough one, and this is going to be interesting because, again, I don't know that the fan base is going to get behind this one. I would I would venture to guess that more fans will be. Uh, upset by this than than the men's or women's basketball coaching searches that have happened and in my problem and why i have such a hard time with it paul is like i don't know as much or have as much of an opinion on what goes into making a great college baseball coach so before i moved to wichita college baseball was fun and exciting but it was never like at the forefront of the things that i covered it was never at the and in wichita it absolutely is with the history obviously which is spelled out you know, in the letter Saul sent to fans and supporters that, about this decision in the first place. I, it's just, I, you know, I, um, I don't know what goes into it and I don't know, I don't know what drives that success. I have no idea. And so I have to just sort of observe on this one. I really don't have, you know, much to say. I would have gone, tried to get some sort of like short term deal with Hibs, but that, you know, what what I do know, Paul, is this program has to return to dominance. Like it just has to. Like the facilities are there, the history is there. I know that weather is a challenge here now and a bigger challenge probably than it ever has been before. But this is a 
bold decision uh, by Kevin Saul because I don't, he's not, I don't know that he'll get the support on this that he got with the other programs. I, I don't know that he will. I certainly won't from the alumni, right? Like not, not from the former players and, you know, everybody that's had connections to the program, that support's not going to come. That support would have been in the court of, of Lauren Hips right. and, and the staff that had so many ties to the university and those sorts of things. That's that part is going to be difficult and we'll see that reaction. And we're kind of beginning to see it right now um, already, but that's coming. And, th- and then that'll have to be navigated. Right. And, and I think Kevin Saul would be the first to understand we're talking about, uh, uh, we're talking about a coach who was just named conference coach of the year. I mean, this is, let, let's face it. This is something you don't see all that often uh, in this kind of situation, uh, you know, conference coach of the year and, and, and you're not going to be retained. But there's more to this than, than meets the eye. I don't know what it is, and I don't know what, what how how this is going to play out. But this is still a prime job when it comes to coaching uh, at the college level. This is one of the best jobs. It's one of the, what, top at least four or five stadiums. Wouldn't you say probably a top five stadium in the country? It's for hard col- for me to say because I haven't seen enough of them. It's the best stadium I've ever seen for college baseball outside of, you know, where the College World Series is played. Right. right. Well, I, I don't. I I've been, I haven't, and I've been to Texas Tech's, and it's really nice now that they've done the upgrades. But man, Eck is as good as it gets. It's, right. the, it's the nicest I've seen. I've yeah. seen every stadium that's played baseball in the Big Twelve. I've seen them all, uh, at one way or another, going through or recruiting in a particular city or whatever the case might be. And Wichita State is by far the best one, and that includes Baylor, yeah. which is a really nice, really nice stadium, by the way. But Wichita State's is really something special. But with that being said, expectations will be high. Whoever takes this job, you know, we're not over the, uh, and I say we're, I, as a baseball fan for Wichita State, uh, we're not past the days of the glory years. We don't think that those days are gone for good. Uh, we've seen basketball programs that uh, seem to have slipped off the upper echelon. I mean, teams particularly like we've seen UCLA for years have, have problems. Indiana, for instance, have problems. Uh, not not to those years that they used to be, and and that's where they're they're at. But that's not Wichita State. I don't believe that that needs to be the case. When you have the framework for a city that loves baseball, for a city that loves Wichita State baseball, this is a great great situation. You know, assuming that the NIL is competitive competitive with all other baseball operations, which I believe it it should be or could be or will be. Uh, with and so. This is a great job. This is one of those jobs that you want. Arizona State's one of those jobs. USC's one of those jobs. There are those jobs out there. I think Clemson, to a certain extent, is getting to be one of those jobs. There are other jobs just like this job, but this is still a great job, and it'll be a first-class coach, whoever they hire. That That's one thing I'm positive of because they don't have to take just any Joe Schmo off the streets to become a base, the head baseball coach here, they'll get somebody of quality. I'm convinced of that. Well, yeah, I, this one, this one's hard because there's so much Wichita state baseball history mm-hmm. tied into this staff. That and that's true. what, that's what makes it brutal. By the way, if you want to read the letter from Kevin Saul on the decision, you can go to kfhradio.com. Uh, we got it right there on the homepage for you. You can check it out, but it is, that that's what will make this more difficult than it typically might be is because of the deep roots of this staff. And that sucks. Like that's what leaves a pit in everybody's stomach, right? That that's what makes it really difficult for everyone. And, and I just, you know, you feel for them and you feel for, for everybody there. And, and it's, uh, you know, good, good luck to everybody involved. Maybe there's a chance for some retention, Maybe Lauren Hibbs is a candidate for the job still. I don't get the indication from that language, which, by the way, you can go again to kfhradio.com and read that statement. But I don't get the indication this this will go in a different direction, I would think. And that's tough. And that's going to be tough to swallow. And it's going to be tough. Whoever the next, you know, whoever the next person is, Paul, they're going to have an added challenge of winning back alumni and fans. Well, and, you know, winning cures everything, but right. that is going to be an added challenge. I don't know because I wasn't here for the Gene Stevenson situation. Um, but, you know, this isn't to that degree, but there will be people upset similarly, I think, to a lesser degree that, you know, this has happened and not given a longer time. It's just the reality of it. Right. And it, 
and it's hard on me, and, and I don't mean to make this personal because it's not personal. I understand we live in the world of sports. You and I, you and I have both signed contracts. We understand what it means to be competitive. I've never had a coaching job that I didn't sign a contract for with certain expectations to meet and those kind of things. So you and I understand the world in which we live in, in the world of sports and broadcasting for you. Uh, and the thing that makes this hard on a personal note for me is that, you know, Mike Pelfrey is on this staff. Mike Pelfrey is a yep. friend of mine. He's I've known him ever since his days at Wichita State. Uh, he's in the Wichita Sports Hall of Fame. Mike Pelfrey makes the fifth Wichita State uh, coach that's in the Wichita Sports Hall of Fame not have a job here anymore. That's this will be my fifth with Mike Pelfrey, and I and that breaks my heart because I like Mike Pelfrey. He's a friend of this show. You know, if you or I ever needed Mike Pelfrey on this show, you know, he'd drop yep. whatever he's doing and come help us out. You know, we would. And uh, that's what I, I, you know, I like these guys. I guess I'm, I just always feel bad because a lot of times coaches that around this area, at least in the city of Wichita, that you and I get to know personally, when, when they're, when they're, when they're released, it's hard on us. It's hard on it's hard their on friends. Everybody. It's hard on their family. It's hard on everybody like you say so. i agree and i and i i i definitely am you know fond of mike pelfrey and i hope that you know the opportunities don't end for him he's a wichita Bingo, legend that's he's right in, yeah he's in the hall of fame he's a you know he's a high school legend he's a college legend right he made the pros he did well in the pros like all those things and he's a good dude and a good family man and hopefully yeah hopefully for everybody on the staff they can land on their feet and who knows I, I, you know paul that's the thing too like that's again like Maybe the next coach understands that and wants to try to, you know, to recapture some of that. Maybe some of the staff is retainable. I have no idea. I don't, I don't either. know. All I, we know. Right. right. All we know right now is that, you know, they're they're looking and in the, you know, in the release, right? In the in the letter it talks about, you know, all of those guys and again, the language isn't right now, you know, encouraging for that, but um, you know, you know, express sincere appreciation for everybody and all of those things. And so I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but the change has been made. I don't think fans are going to be on board with this one. We'll see. And, you know, the, the pressure's on Kevin Saul to go get somebody to try and get this program to the level it needs to be at, which it hasn't been. And there's no doubt about that. Right. I mean, the, the expectation for the program is conference championships and college world series. Bingo. Boy, and, that's and and that hasn't been hit. And that's, you know, that's what makes this difficult. But again, kfhradio.com, if you want to see the release on that news, certainly much more on that as this process plays itself out. The College World Series is about to happen. So I, again, I don't know enough about college baseball coaching to know how quickly this might move, who the candidates are. No idea. I'm going to have to admittedly defer on that because I just don't know. Well, and there's a lot we don't know, and that's why we've got to take – you know, listen, you either believe in Kevin Saul or not. I'm at the point where I believe in Kevin Saul. I think he's doing a lot of things that are right, a lot of things that are good. Uh, they're, 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 we don't know, and until we know uh, something that, that, that is being done, we have to give the benefit of the doubt. Now, I know it's, it's kind of like, you know, you observe, you make notes, you take, take care of what's going on, you digest it and all that kind of stuff, but we don't really have – enough information right now off this press release to know what's what we just don't know. So, you know, you just got to have some faith that this is all going to work out. Listen, you got a great prod proper uh, project and you got a great property and you got great things that you can sell about Wichita state baseball and you go sell them and you find somebody that can sell them and will sell them and only enhance the product. So, and I've got confidence that that's, what's going to happen. There's a reason that everything I just don't know what it is yet. Hope everybody lands on their feet. Absolutely. Tip of the cap to Lauren Hibbs. Absolutely. Tip of the cap to Lauren Hibbs and that staff for the job Man, they did and they what they inherited in, in the season. Absolutely. Um, so we will keep our, our eye on that. All right, patiently waiting real quick before we take our break uh, to the IHOP hotline. Terry is on the line. Terry, what's up? Hey, guys. Hey, I just had a chuckle at your coffee talk uh, before this. Oh, segment. yeah? And that uh, I'm like you, Jacob, I buy four or five cups of black coffee a day. I've never done the iced coffee, but ran cross country and track in college and then eventually got into ultra marathoning. I've done that for years and nothing tastes better to me than being out on a trail and pulling into a, 
a medical water station during a race and having some hot black coffee. No way. I've never heard of that. And Jad oh, Chambers is so at at the, chuckling point. at that. I've never heard of that. I, I, I'm, I'm going to have to call, you know what, on it a little bit. Come on now. I've never heard anybody say that. Oh, I love hot. I, I, yeah, I'll, I'll drink hot coffee in 100-degree weather. I mean, I, it's just – but it's something about when you're out there doing something physical – Oh, it tastes so good for some reason when it hits your mouth. But hey, yeah, guys, well, I I'm not. There. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to say I'm not a runner uh, at all. But yeah, I, I'm with you. I'll drink that. The temp, the weather outside doesn't inhibit me from wanting hot black coffee in the mornings. Go ahead, no, Terry. What were you going to say? Um, just uh, on the Lauren Hibbs situation, since that just came out, listening, to you guys and enjoy enjoy your show. By the way. Um, isn't he, uh, and I'll hang up after I ask this question, but uh, he's already employed by the university in another capacity, correct? This is just an interim job. I, I don't know what this does. I really don't. I don't know what this means or does to that. And we appreciate the call, Terry. Thank you. And and thanks for the for the nice words on the show. I, um, I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, you know, he was in an, in an administrative capacity. So, I, again, these are the parts of this we don't really know. That's why he was here before, and then he took that interim job. I, it, it all depends on a lot of things, I would imagine. So we'll have to see on that. I, I'm not sure what happens with you know Lauren Hibbs or any of this staff. We'll just have to 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 sort of observe that for a little bit and then see. It's just it's going to be hard on you know it's going to be hard on the fan base and the alumni to digest this one because they have so much love and appreciation for the members of the staff and everything else that have, that have been a part of the program in recent years. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a complicated thing when it comes to employment, by the way, athletic employment is different than the regular university. Although both are overseen by the university and both uh, academic and athletics are both, uh, you know, governed by the university. They're different. They're different things. I mean, they're different, uh, uh, I mean, there are different types of contracts. The athletics, the athletic department contracts with their people. Academics contract with their people. So what? But what that means, I don't know. But I, I am fairly confident in saying, Jacob, that uh, Coach Hibbs is governed by a contract on the athletic side and is not an employee of of the other side of the campus. Yeah, it's. Uh, it will be. Um, I don't know. I don't know what to think. We're going to need a little time to digest this, maybe even more than today as we make our way through. But your calls on it are always welcome on the IHOP hotline, 869-1240. Again, Lauren Hibbs and staff uh, seemingly out as uh, Kevin Saul announces today that he will begin a nationwide search. It doesn't read like that nationwide search includes the current coaches. Could be wrong about that. We'll have to see if that's possible, um, but, but I'm not sure. You can read that statement, kfhradio.com. We have it up there online for you. We're going to come back. We're going to talk a little football, but we can take more calls on Wichita State baseball. Oh, Chad joined us. I didn't I didn't see that. Hey, Chad, we'll get you in here before we take a break. What's on your mind? Good morning, guys. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Oh, I am. I don't know about this Kevin Saul. I don't know if he can find a better baseball guy than Lauren Hibbs. And that's, isn't that the goal when you fire someone is to find someone better? I think that I think that that's going to be the sentiment. It was certainly the sentiment of Tommy on Friday. What are you going to find that's better than Lauren Hibbs and what's done? And, and and I don't even know. Like I suppose this is firing, but it goes back to Paul's question. Like, what is the you know? Is there still an administrative role that you go back to? I have no idea. I doubt it. But I don't know. Even and go that's to a why baseball game this spring. I wonder. I. If he didn't watch this team play, where did this decision come from? That's what. It well, they went three. Me. Look, they went three. They went three and eight down the stretch, and I think that hurt that. I, I, I think that hurt the chances. I think that they didn't finish strong enough, and that was pretty clear when you talk when we talked to Kevin Saul that he was not loving the fact that they were stumbling down the stretch there. But again, I the, my problem with it, Chad, and 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 I'm like I will absolutely admit it and have and will continue to do so because I'm not going to give like a hot take on something I don't know about. I just don't know about that world, that process, what it looks like, what kind of candidates are out there. I have no idea when it comes right. to a college baseball coach. 
So I just have to sort of sit here and say, okay. I mean, when they hired Eric Wedge, I was like, well, that's a great idea, right? right. Ties to the program sure. and all the things. And that didn't work out at all. So I, I don't know. I'm just going to you know, I'll plead the fifth on an opinion of what makes a great college baseball coach because I, I really don't know. Yeah, part of the problem, Chad, is we don't know what the what, what what's going on with Coach Hibbs. We don't know. We don't even at this point know that if he wants to be the head coach, or maybe he's just saying, "I don't mind staying on with with the new staff if you want me." But I mean, there's things that we don't know. And before we start jumping on on uh, on opinions, uh, Jacob and I, at least in particular, because of this show, we've got we've got some things that we've got to find out, and uh, we just can't speculate. Uh, it could end up being a horrible decision. And that's the oh, a sure. real possibility if, if everything falls in line. Bad things could happen from this decision, but it's way too early to know. And until we know why, which we do not know, uh, we do not know that maybe it's Coach Hibbs doesn't want to do it. We don't know. And, and, and so until we know that, it's hard to judge why this is happening. And I think at least for Jacob and I, we've got to reserve our, our opinions until we – get some inkling of an idea of what the heck's going on. Okay. That's mm -hmm. Chad. Sure. That, that's, I think that's fair for Jacob and myself. I agree. I just, I hope it works out for the Shockers. Well, we they're do. Too. We fans. do too. We do. Too. Ultimately, ultimately that's, you know, that's the end game for all of us. The program we hope to return to a day of former glory. Certainly as we watch, you know, regionals and super regionals that, again, without Wichita that, state participating, that's hard. And hard. that's probably why we're sitting here having this conversation. It's that's not probably correct. it is. Man, it is that part. I do know. I, I do want know. New like, years it, put up on the stadium. If you know what I mean? I want new years yeah. down the row. I want more and more college years. world series. Parents. I want all that stuff. Yeah. I do too. We all do. We yeah, all do, we including all do. the staff that was working their tails off to get it done. Right. It's tough. It's a tough day because so many of these guys have so many ties to Wichita State baseball and those glory days. Let's take a quick break. We'll come back. Let's talk a little DeAndre Hopkins. We haven't oh, had a I chance like since that. he's become a free agent. 869-1240. More Sports Daily coming for you right after this. Your phone call is welcome. 869-1240. Sports Daily on 97.5 and 1240. KFH, Wichita's number one sports talk radio. Spring is in the air, and that means one thing. Dandelions are coming. Don't let those annoying yellow weeds invade your lawn again. This year, trust your lawn to Ryan Lawn and Tree. This is Larry Ryan. No other lawn care company delivers the results, but Ryan Lawn and Tree delivers more than just providing a beautiful dandelion free lawn. Your trusted pros in the clean red trucks make sure your entire landscape is healthy, strong, and ready to look great no matter what nature throws at it. And unlike the other guys, the pros at Ryan Lawn and Tree are employee owners, full time professionals going above and beyond every day with five. Five star customer service. Call us or click RyanLawn.com today. And as a new customer, you'll save 50% on your first lawn application. Enjoy a worry free, effort free, dandelion free lawn this year with Ryan Lawn and Tree. Topper's Plus Truck Accessories has moved to a new location at 333 Northwest Street. Whether you're working or playing, Toppers Plus will get your truck ready with Rhino linings. Nothing beats a Rhino, the leader in sprayed-on truck bed liners that outperforms plastic drop-in rubber mats and paint-like coatings. They won't crack, peel, or warp, and include a lifetime warranty. Toppers Plus, your Rhino dealer. Visit our new location at 333 Northwest Street or toppersplusks.com. Make your truck work for you! Taco Bell and Pizza Hut invite you to tune in this Friday, June 2nd, for the live simulcast of the Riverfest Nextron Aviation Opening Night Fireworks on 103.7 KEYN. Be sure to visit your local Taco Bell or Pizza Hut location, bringing you all the sights and sounds of Riverfest fireworks. Taco Bell and Pizza Hut. Tune in this Friday, June 2nd, for the live simulcast of the Riverfest Dextron Aviation Opening Night Fireworks on 103.7 KEYN. Baseball is in full swing. The free Odyssey app lets you listen to local coverage for the team you love. Live stream your favorite sports radio station or jump back and listen to the best segments on demand. Don't forget we talk to the manager every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Don't listen to some guy from the other side of the country tell you about your team. 
live conversations for your local team. No matter where you are, your season, your Odyssey. Get in the game and download the free Odyssey app today. Prescriptions required in online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine appropriate restrictions. Apply to website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. Hey guys, did you know there's a generic form of Viagra that works just the same but is 95% cheaper? And you can get it online. Just go to fourhims.com slash joy. Through Hims, you'll get a free medical consultation, discreet shipping if prescribed, a 100% online process, and trusted generic alternatives to the name brands at up to 95% off. That's right, get generic for Viagra, the same active ingredient as brand name Viagra, but for 95% less. It's the same medication, still prescribed by a licensed medical provider, but with zero copay, no expensive appointments, and no awkward face-to-face -face conversations. To start your free online visit, you need to go to this exclusive address, 4 slash joy. That's 4 slash joy for your free online visit. F-O-R-H-I-M-S dot com slash J-O-Y. Okay, outdoor summer cocktail party fit check. I've got a hot pink and orange bodycon dress paired with vintage sneakers. It'll definitely attract attention, but not from mosquitoes, because I'm wearing it with off clean feels for eight gorgeous hours of not sticky, fragrance free protection. So I can zip, socialize, and flirt out there in the wild with absolutely unshakable confidence. Get your pre party protection on with off clean feels. S.C. Johnson, a family company. Did you know you can get someone to shop for you? Stitch Fix really gets me and what I need. Even better, they save me a trip to the mall. It's easy. I share my style, size, and budget, and they do the shopping for me. Stitch Fix sends me things that fit and make me feel like a more stylish version of myself. I keep what works and send back the rest. No subscription required, no commitment, just my style. Stitch Fix. Get started today at stitchfix.com radio. Ladies and gentlemen, Bob and Tom. <laughs> Who is it? Hey, so I come in from a kilometer away. <laughs> Dude, he sold it like a genius. He sure the point, did. The whole thing. Oh, Bob and Tom in the morning and highlights all day long. Bob and Tom, mornings. This is 97.5 and 1240 KFH. The commercials are over. Nope, I haven't got all day. 869-1240. Time to get busy. This is Sports Daily on KFH. All right, welcome back in. Sports Daily. Here we go. Jacob Albrock, Paul Savage. We're making our way through hour number two of this Tuesday. Uh, you miss the news. Lauren Hibbs and staff out at Wichita State National Search is underway. You can chime in on that. Uh, you can comment on our video streams, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. You can call us on the IHOP hotline, 869-1240. Let's talk a little NFL football, Paul. We haven't had a chance to talk about DeAndre Hopkins, I don't think, since he's become a free agent. Now, there's a report out that uh, there really were only two suitors for him in the trade market, and it was the Bills or the, Chief, or the Chiefs with any substantive talks with Arizona at the time. The price tag was too high. Uh, seemingly, which made sense at the time, right? We all talked about that and how Hopkins made a lot of sense, but what could you give up to get him? And he's an expensive player. Well, now he's just an expensive player, right? Now there is nothing you have to give up because the Cardinals cut him and you can get him for money and that's it. You don't have to have any draft capital. And so obviously in that scenario for a player of his caliber, even at his advanced age and even at his price tag, there are probably going to be plenty of suitors now for DeAndre Hopkins. Now, he has uh, stated multiple times his desire to play for a contender, for a quarterback that's really good and cares about the game, you know, shots fired at Kyler Murray, all that kind of stuff. I, so knowing that a lot of teams are going to be interested in DeAndre Hopkins, assuming the price tag, and we don't know how that could get negotiated out. But, Paul, if the Chiefs could maneuver it and get him in there, how much sense do you think that makes and how much urgency do you think there needs to be 
to explore that for the Chiefs, or are they fine without it and they don't want they don't need to pay him that much money? And and where, where do you sit with DeAndre Hopkins? Well, I saw an article this morning that that uh, was basically written within the last twelve hours, and it states that uh, there's still the only the two teams that are interested are the Bills and the Chiefs. So that's an oh, update. No, I don't. That's an. I update. think that's just who was. I think that's nope. just who was going to trade for him. I think there's way more teams now. Well, than now now there are, but that's that's what what I saw this morning. Uh, but with that being said. You know this guy does have some baggage. There's there's a there's a couple small bags attached, and so when you uh, when you look at this guy, you know you think to yourself, well, who's equipped to handle somebody like this when they come onto the team, when they join the team, when they're on in the locker room, when they're in the weight room, when they're on the field, when they're on the practice field, you know, when they're on the plane going to a game, who who is this guy? Is is he somebody that can enhance our program? And of all the programs in the in in the NFL that could handle a, a guy like Deion Hopkins, it would be, it would be, I think, the Chiefs. Because we've seen how they handle people they perceive that's a problem and get rid of them. Do I need to mention Tariq Hill comes to mind right off the get? I don't think they get rid. I think they the guys generally go there and just we don't they don't have a problem. Like Frank Clark had some problems away from he the field, but as a player had, and in the locker room, right? He seemed like he was fine, like he fit in. So did Tyreek Hill, and Tyreek Hill had far more baggage coming in than even than even Frank Clark did. Whatever, I guess that's debatable, but. They didn't necessarily got get rid of Tyreek Hill. They just they drew their line in the sand and said we're not we're we're not going to you know invest our money and make you the highest paid right. receiver. That, I don't you know Tyreek Hill was phenomenal and still has been by the way phenomenal since he left. It wasn't, but they're if they're not and that's what that's where this really comes into play. Like how much for how long is DeAndre Hopkins going to cost you? So his contract is kind of like just this year. And and here's where I'm fascinated by the DeAndre Hopkins situation. Like if is Hopkins himself ready to go right now and make as much money as he can this season or is he would he potentially be willing, right, to sort of have a prove it kind of year maybe. I it, it's a it's an interesting situation with DeAndre Hopkins and he's a free agent in 2025, but I don't like the NFL contracts get so complicated that I don't know, like what can, what can still be managed out of this contract? How much is actually owned owed? I should say, like if, if a team signs him, how much wiggle room and creativity is there with that? Like, it's all very tricky. And the Chiefs don't have much money. They have the the smallest wiggle room in their cap space of any team in the NFL. They have like a million bucks, and guess who's second to last? The Bills, right? So the two teams who could definitely use a player of his caliber to put him over the edge can't afford him in their current, like, you know, can't afford him in the current market. Teams like the Bears, the Panthers, the Colts, the Lions, uh, they all have some money. The Jets, by the way, which is really interesting. The Texans. I, I think the Browns become a relatively interesting team in this a potential reunion with Deshaun Watson. I just don't know because I don't fully have a grasp on what it's going to cost you to do it. Like, what do you have to pay all of that money right now? Because that's going to take a lot of teams out of the mix. Or is there flexibility and creativity there? because it's going to have to take that for these premier teams to even consider it. Yeah, and all those teams are going to take those kind of things into consideration. The one consideration that we haven't talked about yet is is obviously the Andre Hopkins mindset on how important is a ring to him. Is it the Bills? Is it the Chiefs? Is this are these two teams that you would want to go to? I think both these teams will be contenders over the course of the next few years uh as to uh, winning a, a, a Super Bowl championship. And and Hopkins is 30 years old. I mean, you know, it, it, he's had uh, a, a nice career, uh, but it's been a fairly long career in terms of, you know, the years played in the NFL. How bad does he want to ring? How bad does he want to play for a contender? How bad does he want to be in the playoffs and try to win that elusive ring? Because the ring is so important to so many players. I get it. I know why. I understand that. But I think this is also interesting with regards to his mindset. Does he want to go where the money is? 
does he want to go have a chance to win a championship? I think those are questions that we don't know yet. Uh, we don't know where his mind is. Perhaps he's made enough money in his career where, you know, he'll take maybe a little less. And it's not like he's going to take a fortune less. He's going to take a little less maybe to sign with one of the teams that have a shot. And maybe that's where he is in his life. Maybe it's not totally about, you know, the biggest payday I can get. Maybe it's not about that. So I think there's still some questions out there that we need to know the answers to. And maybe even there's some questions that DeAndre Hopkins has to ask himself. I think that's going to be the interesting part, but there's a lot about this story. We don't know. And like you said, we don't know who all is going to hop into the, uh, into the fray to try to sign this guy. I mean, he's a player. I mean, he can be a difference maker. Uh, so yeah, we'll see what happens, but I've got a feeling he might want to go try to win a ring. That that's the feeling I get about this whole story. I could be wrong. But that's the that's yeah, the feeling I, I get. I don't know either. I think there's two teams that could probably afford it better than others that are desperate enough that three teams, I'll say three, that he could justify um, that are good enough to win a Super Bowl that he feels like could put him over the edge. They're all in the AFC, which that's is right. interesting. They're all there. Yeah, they're but all three the of them. Jets, the Jets, the Ravens, and the Browns. Um you know, they could all probably figure out a way to do it financially. And all three of them, not not as much the Ravens in the sense of like they're all in and got to push all the chips in. The Ravens are to me to a lesser degree than the Browns and the Packers because the Ravens, yes, they just paid their quarterback. But I don't think anybody felt like the Ravens were pushing all their chips into the middle right now with Lamar. Jack like that's a long term play. The Jets have absolutely pushed it all into the middle of the table. So does DeAndre Hopkins come in and help them? Sure he does. And and like if you're making the moves that the Jets are making now and it's just money that it costs you to bring him in, why on earth would you not consider it, right? A player like him, even, even as he's older now and receivers, you know, receivers don't age well. But, you know, outside of a couple injuries, he's been durable, he's been reliable, and he's, and he's one of the great receivers in the game the last decade or so. And then the Browns, like the Browns, for a less smart reason than the Jets, pushed all their chips into the table with Deshaun Watson, but they still did it. And if you're trying to have Deshaun Watson succeed, you know, they have Amari Cooper there now. They just traded for Elijah Moore, who is a very talented young player. They've got money. Why wouldn't you think about bringing in Deshaun Watson for a year or two of reuniting with, you know, with his former quarterback who you know they've had success together? And I don't know what their relationship's like. I know they had success together. But to me, those are the three teams that feel the most urgency to do it. I don't think that the Chiefs or the Bills have to do it. I think no matter whether they do it or anybody else does it, those are still the two favorites to win the Super Bowl this year uh, with Cincinnati right there with them. The three favorites, we'll call it. Um, but I would still say the Chiefs and the Bills are probably more of a favorite even. But we'll see. You know, I don't, it's, it's going to be interesting. Did Hopkins has said he wants to go to a contender basically with good quarterback. And that does limit the op options, right? I've heard the lions as a dark horse candidate. The lions are interesting, but is Jared Goff, you know, what, what makes sense for Deandre Hopkins? I don't know. I don't know. This is going to be, we don't see this happen very often. And we have some big time, you know, names still in free agency, like Ezekiel Elliott, but I don't think people generally feel like Ezekiel Elliott has much left in the tank. I don't, I mean, everybody, I think feels like Deandre Hopkins has enough left in the tank to have these conversations for sure. Right. Well, I think you're right. However, uh, I look at, I look at a Detroit lions and the reason I kind of poo poo that is that, uh, you know, Dan Campbell's kind of that old school type coach. I, I don't picture Deandre. They want to run the ball. And they, they want to run right. the ball. They want to be physical. They want to hit you in the mouth. I don't picture DeAndre Hopkins is finding that spot quite as readily with the Lions based upon who they are mentally, who they want to be, and what they want to do on the field. So I, I'm not sure that I'm buying the Lions. Now watch the guy sign with the Lions and prove me wrong. But the point is, is that uh, I look at I look at the Chiefs and I look at at the Bills and I think to myself, you want to play for a contender. There's two teams that that will contend. And both teams that really could use your services, I think it's a no-brainer. I'm not convinced about the Browns, and I'm certainly not con uh, convinced with the Ravens. 
and 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 both those have what you would call a top ten type quarterback. Both those franchises are top ten quarterbacks, but you know you only get a chance to play with with Allen and uh, you, uh, and 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 with the Chiefs. I mean, with with those kind of guys, you know, a Mahomes and an Allen are two special. Yeah, but players. they can't. Man, that you'd have to take such a pay cut. Here's the other part of that. Well, I don't for know how, what's how much. How much is how much? I'm not sure. They don't I know have any much. money. They don't have any money on the cap right now, and well, his contract is for this year. It's like twenty million dollars almost. Like I don't know. Like how much of a pay cut is a pay cut, right? Like are you his his salary right now? He signed a like a two year. $50 million contract, $54 million contract. His average salary is $27 million. So there's a massive difference between what they can afford currently and what he's scheduled to make, I think. So two, there's two parts of that that make it seem unlikely. And I initially said, and I tweeted this right when it happened, that he's going to be a chief. And that was based on, if you remember way back, the odds on favorite before there were even like official trade demands. That there were there were odds made, and the Chiefs were pretty handily the odds on favor to get him if he were to get traded. And I've always filed that away because Vegas is rarely wrong. And I've just sort of filed it away. And then I think like if there's ever a prove it, like if you want to go prove it and get another longer term deal, the Chiefs are the place you go. But the but the finances were a little bit different then, and I've sort of backed off that thought since I put the thought out there. Because I just don't know how financially on either side it could work. If it can, boy, it makes a ton of sense for both sides. Right. Because both, t you know, Hopkins would benefit greatly from playing with Mahomes and the Chiefs could use that sort of a weapon. Because think about the receivers they do have. Hop they don't have a true outside threat at receiver like Hopkins would provide them. It'll be it'll be it interesting. Be. I I'm I'm I think the possibility exists still because I think it's always been there and there's been a clear desire from both parties. But it'll be tough. It'll be difficult, especially now that he's going to have the option probably just to go to the highest bidder. So we'll see. Uh DeAndre Hopkins is a free agent. That doesn't happen very often, Paul. You no. don't usually see no. guys like him become free agents like that right. very often. Yeah, but you're talking about a guy with a twenty two million dollar, you know, hit know. on the cap. I mean that's significant, my friend. That is significant. All right. We'll take a quick break. We'll come back. More Sports Daily coming up for you right after this.
Welcome back, everybody. Sports Daily. It's all Brockton Savage on this Tuesday. Jad Chambers producing for us. Hope everybody enjoyed the holiday weekend. Remember why we have that holiday weekend in particular. It is the unofficial start of the summer. Uh, Paul, how's your summer tan? You had any pool time yet? How, you know, how's how's this how's this thing working for you so far? Well, you know, it's 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 tough on a guy like me because you know you're in such demand, and and after all, you know, it's you know the body that I have just it, it attracts so many mm-hmm. females that it's it's hard to go to the pool because after all, you know, I just don't need all the attention. Right, right. I I hear you. You're you're doing everyone a favor because you don't want to make everybody <laughs> else at the pool well jealous. Well, that's right. right. Yeah, right. That Jad smirking over here. Jad, I don't. Think at what I, point? I don't need those smirks. Like at Thank what point much. do we not care about that stuff either? By the way, like I, I I'm in not in good shape, man. I guess it's just like you just don't care anymore, right? You just let it all hang out and just enjoy the sun like everybody else. Uh, I, I like that my kids now are getting to the age where they can, they're, they're very close to being sustained, self-sustained in a mm-hmm. pool. Um, and that's, that's, that's a changer. That's we were sitting with some other parents yesterday. And I was like, man, like, can you reach, can you believe we've all reached this point where we can just sort of, you know, sit here and monitor, right? Because you have to always monitor, but. You're not you're not having to be with them because, of course, in the pool this time of year, the right. water is ice cold. Right. right. Like it's not like it's ice cold water. It's not that hot outside. And you're just like suffering through and you don't you know, you can sort of survive it. And it, it's good. It's an interesting stage. And man, pool season pools. Where would we be without pools? I'll right. That's that. a blessing, my friend. Once you get to the point where you don't have to worry about your kids at a pool, that is a blessing. And that is a relief that is only only known by a parent who takes a kid to the pool and you can't take your eyes off of them up until a certain point. And once that happens, that's a blessing. And that's uh, that changes everything. And by the way, those kind of changes coming up for you and your wife, there's still more to come, by the way. You know, I can, in fact, here's what I want. I want to be invited the first time some guy comes by to pick up your, your oldest daughter on a date. I want to be sitting in the house. I want to watch you invite this young man into the house and let her leave. I, I just want to watch and see how you handle it. I think it'll be unique experience for you, but I want to just watch. Is that possible? Yeah. Yeah. It's probably possible. Oh, good. Okay. It's probably possible. Okay. Yeah. Good. Uh, it's uh Jed's chuckling you know. over here, but, it, but I guess my point is, is that if you're a father long enough, it'll happen. I hated it. I hated that moment. I absolutely despise that moment. I didn't want it to happen, and yet somehow it happened. Well, happens to the best of us. Happy summer, everybody. Happy summer. Officially, happy summer. You bet. Uh, we'll 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 try to keep Savage away from the pools. Uh, well, I mean, I, to, I think know, that's fair. I think that's that's yeah, that's, I, that's fair. We just we need to you know we need to all maintain. Uh, real quick on the finals, Paul. Uh, we haven't talked about it in a while. Miami gets it there. Um, what a what a story they've been. And I guess my last question, and then we can look forward. Are they really a Cinderella? I would say yes. I think less than they're being, you know, less than their seed would indicate, but I can't I can't shake the fact that they've been missing one of their best players this entire time essentially and they're still here. And like are they a Cinderella? And does Jimmy Butler just now at this point belong in that, you know, postseason killer conversation where if he is playing in these games, his teams no matter who is on them have a chance. Because he has been really good at times. He's been, you know, Herculean at times in that first series. And then he's been pretty good, but he's been a little up and down. And they're still right here. But, man, when it comes down to it, how many guys in basketball, if you were in this situation that they faced yesterday in a game seven, how many guys are you going to take leading the way over Jimmy Butler right now in the NBA? I don't think it's many. And I'm not saying I think he's the best player in the league because I don't think he is. But when it comes to that it factor, He's as good as there is. Yeah. Well, it's interesting, by the way, you bring up Jimmy Butler. How ironic it was last night to watch Jimmy Butler receive the Larry Bird player of player of player of the of the of the conference semifinals. 
I mean, how 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 ironic was that? On the floor of the Boston Celtics, you get an opposing player get the uh, Larry Bird uh, award. But here's the here's the thing that that we got to look at. Bolster said it yesterday at his press conference. They're playing like a team. This is a team that has matured, matured past the point of individuals. They are a team, a true team. They are. We'll come back. Let's uh, give away some wind surge tickets, vouchers, game of your choice. First caller, 869-1240 to the IOP hotline. Jad will get us a winner. We'll wrap up this Tuesday right after this. Looking for some of the very best brands around? Shop Pride Ag Ace Hardware, where you'll find great products like Steel, Milwaukee, Yeti, Weber, and Traeger, all under one roof. So shop Pride Ag Ace Hardware in Mays, where we take pride in serving you. I'm attorney Tyler Patterson. Patterson Legal Group helps hundreds of people each year with their car wreck cases. That's a lot of checks for a lot of happy people. And as our way of saying thanks, we're committed to making Kansas a better place for everyone. Over the years, we've donated hundreds of thousands of dollars to local nonprofits in the community. When you hire Patterson Legal Group, you're not just getting a team of legal professionals, you're helping make Kansas a better place for everyone. Patterson Legal is the way to go. Call 5 oh, 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 oh. Saving money in your entire roofing project, now at Menards. Owens Corning Architectural Shingles are designed to provide long-lasting performance and striking beauty. Choose from more than 50 styles. Available now in-store or on Menards.com. Save on your entire roofing project with 11% off all Owens Corning shingles. Now at Menards. Good through June 4th, savings are a mail-in rebate. Some exclusions apply. See store for details. Save big money at Menards. Topper's Plus Truck Accessories has moved to a new location at 333 Northwest Street. We're ready to hook you up for trailer season, whether you're towing your boat, cycle, RV, or lawn equipment. Toppers Plus has receiver hitches, goosenecks, fifth wheel hitches, brake controllers, and trailer wiring. Choose from top brands like B&W Hitches, Made in Kansas, or Reese, Kurt, and Draw Type. Hitches matter. Get trailer season ready at Toppers Plus. New location, 333 Northwest Street or toppersplusks.com. Make your truck work for you! 50% off. Have you ever wondered how Mike Seltzer creates such stunning, elegant jewelry and then sells it for 50% off? Well, we may never know, but it certainly shows how much his customers mean to him. Think about it. Mike Seltzer Jewelers is having their anniversary, yet they're the ones giving you 50% off as Mike's way of thanking the community. That's right. Impeccable service and truly the best prices on the most beautiful jewelry. They really do have it all. And at 50% off, everyone can have the jewelry they've always wanted but never thought they could afford. Mike Seltzer Jewelers, 2929 North Rock Road in Comatera Center. Stop in during May and June and celebrate their anniversary by allowing Mike to give you a heartfelt gift. The chance to own something exquisite in diamonds and gold. Something you'll cherish forever at half the price you'd normally pay. Mike Seltzer Jewelers, where elegance is now affordable. Wesley Financial Group is not a law firm. This story is called The Ugly Truth About Timeshare. If you think you've done your family a favor by buying a timeshare, you need my help. Hello, I'm Chuck McDowell, CEO and founder of Wesley Financial Group. Ten years ago, I started helping folks cancel their timeshare. In the process, started what's now called the timeshare cancellation industry. Timeshare is the only thing that you can buy that you can't tell me how much it's going to cost or when it's going to end. When you buy a timeshare, you give them a blank check to fill out any amount they want for annual maintenance and assessment fees. The crazy thing is, this never ends. Even when you die, your family's now going to be stuck with this burden. Stop the insanity today. Call my office now. If we take you as a client, I guarantee we'll cancel your timeshare or you'll pay nothing. Call for your free information kit. 800-981-4455. That's 800-981-4455. 800-981-4455. Without the ones like you who work tirelessly to keep things running, everything would suddenly stop. Hospitals, factories, schools, and power plants, they all depend on you. No matter the weather, emergency, or time of day, you're the ones who get it done. At Granger, we're here for you with professional grade industrial supplies. Count on real time product availability and fast delivery. Call clickgranger.com or just stop by. 
Granger for the ones who get it done. The KFH Studios, powered by Devon James Injury Lawyers. Call 888-8888. That's 888-8888. Ladies and gentlemen, Bob and Tom. Every day I sing Tom's silly tunes. You know he can count on me. I lend him my ear when a problem appears. I'm the godfather of Willie G. <laughs> oh, but I'm not high on the list of Tom's friends. <laughs> Bob and Tom in the morning and highlights all day long. Bob and Tom, mornings. This is 97.5 and 1240 KFH. Wichita's most listened to sports radio. 97.5 and 1240 KFH. All right, everybody, that'll do it for us on this Tuesday. Paul and I will be back tomorrow. Glad to have you with us. There's going to be some fallout to the Lauren Hibbs decision. We're seeing a large number of Shocker baseball players entering the transfer portal. Clearly, I think we're seeing that he had the support of the players. So this is going to be a decision with a lot of uh, ripple effects. We'll get more into that tomorrow and much more. Tommy will be back with us next week. Congratulations to him on the new addition to his family. For Jad Chambers, Paul Savage, I'm Jacob Albrock. We'll see you tomorrow.